Arthur Steffi gave almost three decades of his life and creative skills to his profession of orthopedics. He also created a company to manufacture the advanced surgical implants that allowed his visionary patient treatments to become life-changing realities. It was a career that earned him international renown but ended in national controversy. Noting it as the sad part of his career, Arthur defines it as the struggle between the medical society and the legal society, with one trying to help physicians advance and the other trying to push physicians down. I want a company that will do things for me tomorrow. If I want to do, get something today, and many, many times that happened, we replaced the first entire sacrum in a spine, found the patient, nothing to do for him. Let's try to replace your whole sacrum. Nobody had ever done that before. So we sat down, made the sacrum. I said, I'm going to, this patient's on the schedule for next week. I need it not next year, I need it next week. And we'd have it. Or I need it for tomorrow. And we'd have it. Because we had our own company, we had our own research lab, we had our own machine shops, we had everything right there. And we could get things instantly. Where did you get that idea that you you had the ability to think of things that could really work and change medical It's treatments? just a matter of being always working all the time, always faced with the problem. That's the beauty of orthopedics. Often you, you go into an operating room, you don't know what you're going to find all the time, and you get thrown a lot of curved balls. And when you're faced with a problem and you get yourself into a problem, you've got to be able to know where's the back door? How do I get out of this problem? How do I solve the problem? I don't have all week long to figure out how to solve that problem. I have to solve it now, right now. But when people would come with terrible problems, terrible spines. Some of the spines you see were just terrible. I can show you pictures of people all bent over, all crooked, all can't walk, can't do this, and we straighten them right out. Because nobody could ever do that before. And that was the sad part of this, is that you have a legal society and a medical society, and the one tries to advance, the other tries to push you down. You have, and, and why? Because it's, I would love to know, I would love to know the answer as to how much of that $112 million that we paid to settle that legal case actually went to the patient. I would lay you an even bet that they didn't get very much. It went to the lawyers. Went to the lawyers. Clearly you have a passion for helping people. When you see something that's wrong or that someone's suffering, you want to try to make that better. It's the greatest feeling in the world to do something and succeed. It's the greatest disappointment in the world to fail with a patient. Try it, losing a patient on the table. That's one of the worst possible things that can happen to a physician. Just turn it around, turn it upside down and say, what does it feel like to take that same patient who couldn't walk before in such terrible pain and have them walk into your office afterwards and say, I don't hurt at all. That's the greatest satisfaction in the world. I lived, I ate, and I breathed, and I slept my work. I lived my work. That's the only way that you can possibly do it, is to be, it's your life. Sitting in the car, driving back and forth to home, you're constantly operating on people figuring, what problem am I going to find? How do I get out of the problem? What's the solution to this? Everything is different. None of them are the same. They all come to you quite differently. Would these solutions just pop into your head? Like would they just... Well, it's a, co it's a combination of years and years and years of looking at all these different problems and say, well, last yesterday I 
went this far, let's go just a little further today. And in acknowledging all that, when this major class action lawsuit came against you and then there's a 60 Minutes show and all this conversation about you being and your technique being the, you know, the anti-whatever, how hard was it to feel good about yourself and what you'd achieved? I felt good patients? about myself. I just felt very embarrassed about the fact that my name was being really <laughs> shot down. I don't know if I have a copy of 60 Minutes. I'd like you to read it, see it. Maybe you can dial it up. I don't know. But it was something not nice to see. And, and so, you know, that's not why I retired. I retired because I went broke practicing medicine. I don't know what it is today, but in those years, you couldn't get in the front door of the hospital without you had your malpractice insurance. Mm -hmm. They're not going to allow you in. And so ours was ready to do, and without it, we couldn't go to work. So we had to go get the loan to get the malpractice insurance. It was 450000 for the five of us, just so we can help you. And, and, uh, and so I, I thought, uh, I said to my business manager, how much do I have in accounts receivable? She says, uh, your accounts receivable is well over a million dollars. I said, fine. I quit. I'm walking out of here tomorrow, and I'm leaving it all right there. If you can collect any of it, maybe you can drag yourself out of this hole. If you can't, then we're all finished. Fortunately, I had the company. And so Patty and I went to work for the company. And what we did was we traveled, and we traveled all over the world. For three or four years, that's all we did. Yeah, we would go anywhere anybody wanted us to go. We would go to Greece, Egypt, uh, Arabia, and, and we would go give lectures uh, and operate on people all over.